Hi everyone, this is just a quick check-in to explain what in the heck happened where I was no longer creating the podcast and what my plan is moving forward. So I appreciate you taking the time to check in with me so I can explain what all was going on. So first of all, the pandemic, I know this is a shock, but was not great for me. Uh, I don't think it was great for any of us. And it certainly was not great for mental health therapists because going through a traumatic event with clients going through a traumatic event is sort of like traumatic events squared. Um, and I really got incredibly burned out. I just hit a wall. Originally, my idea was to create the You Are Not Your Mother as a kind of pandemic hobby. It allowed me to do some fun things like play around with different software and learn how to do the podcast. And I got to talk to a bunch of really cool, interesting people, but my eyes were bigger than my stomach. And what happened was I completely overcommitted myself. I started dropping the ball in a whole lot of ways. And I also realized that uh, it wasn't helping my mood anymore. I was just feeling overwhelmed and anxious and like I was letting people down. And so I hit that wall and let myself just stop. I had to do a couple of things, including restructure my practice. I had to let go of my office because I just wasn't sure when I would be able to bring people back. And also I was paying a lot of money and realizing that the majority of my clients weren't going to want to come back in person because telehealth worked so well for them, which is great, but paying for office space that I might use maybe one day a week, it, it just didn't make sense anymore. Letting go of my office also let me dial back my practice a little bit, which again was a very difficult decision, but necessary because my burnout was so high. I am not really sure what's going to happen next with my office. It's something that's still in flux for me. I know that most of my clients don't want to go back in person, but I want to go back in person with some of my clients. I'd like to at least offer that. And of course, I'm not working with little kids right now because working with little kids virtually is really difficult, if not impossible, I think, working with preschool aged kids. And so I'm trying to figure that out too. When will I have a play therapy space again? And how might my practice look different if most of my clients want to be online how am I going to navigate that? How am I going to have a cost-effective space where I can see people who want to be in person, but also not be paying full-time office space if I'm not using an office full-time? These are all things I'm considering and thinking about as I move forward, which again makes the Child Anxiety Support Program kind of a place of refuge because it it does some of the things I like best, which is hosting space for people. I really enjoy that. And even though I can't host actual space right now, I can host virtual space. It also is about connection and community. I've always wanted my clients to be able to connect with each other in ways that are ethical and appropriate, but doing in-person things never seem to work because their parents and trying to get schedules to work and childcare to work, it just seemed kind of impossible. And then also I believe that we have so much to learn, not just from experts, but from each other as peers. And so learning from your colleagues in the parenting community, I think is so, so, so powerful. And in normal times, I don't think the board would ever have okayed me creating something like a membership site with psychoeducation and live events, et cetera. And I reached out to them um, mid pandemic talking about you are not your mother because I wasn't sure whether or not clients should be allowed to join. It's, I don't advertise to clients, but if it seems appropriate and they're asking about it, I, they should be, you know, I wanted to make sure it was kosher that they join. And the board said it was fine. I, I don't think they would have said it was fine before the pandemic. And now they're seeing the possibilities of this kind of virtual support. Now, to be clear, my membership is not part of my counseling practice. They're under separate business licenses and everything to just make it really clear that it is not counseling, child anxiety support, you are not your mother. Neither of those 
are or were counseling, there's psychoeducation and peer support. They are not covered by HIPAA. I cannot guarantee confidentiality, although I certainly do what I can to protect it. Um, one of the things about the membership site too is that you can join under a fake name. I will know your name because I have access to the, the billing documents and so I would see your real name, but you are welcome to join under a pseudonym because you know, maybe you want to protect your privacy, your child's privacy. Maybe you're you're a professional who is needs to be careful about what you share online. Whatever, that's something that you can do in the membership. But anyway, back to all of the burnout, all of the changes, changes that I'm still in the process of processing. I I realized that I got in over my head, and I was completely overwhelmed and my pandemic hobby ended up feeling more like a burden than like a hobby, which is why I quit doing the podcast. I have a bunch of really great interviews in the can, but haven't had time or the inclination or the energy to edit them. That's the really hard part of the podcast is getting the editing right. And I noticed I was coming to it with such dread that I just decided to give myself permission not to do it. Um, and then last month I canceled my podcast Libsyn, which is the people who host my podcast. I canceled my account there to save the 15 bucks a month and then realized I missed it and I still want to do it. And maybe now I have the a mental and emotional capacity to go back to it. Maybe it will feel like a hobby again. So I'm not doing the You Are Not Your Mother membership. I realized I didn't have a really clear vision for that and as much as I still really care about working with people like me who are working to dismantle family patterns of dysfunction, I wasn't really clear about what that meant and I also felt very, very, very concerned that I might be operating out of my scope and accidentally doing things that uh, were more appropriate to do in a counseling office. So I decided to switch the membership to child anxiety support. and. And I wanted to share a little bit about that too. So at the beginning, when I first learned about memberships and wanted to play around with this, I said to my husband, you know, somebody should really do a membership for parents of anxious kids. I could really clearly see how that would work. But I thought that wasn't me because I was doing the You Are Not Your Mother. But the more I realized that, the, that You Are Not Your Mother, I just didn't have a, a clear understanding of what it is I was trying to do other than I wanted people to connect with each other and learn together. Um, I, I, like I said, I realized you were not your mother. I w it wasn't the right project for me. And at the same time, I went and finally got training for this space, which is, I can't remember what that stands for now, but it's, it's for parents of anxious kids. It's an intervention for parents of anxious kids that Ellie Lebowitz out of Yale came up with. And I heard about it a few years ago when there was um, a, an article, or not an article, there was a story on NPR about it. And I took note of it then and uh, signed up to learn more about the trainings, but the trainings always happened when I had clients and I didn't want to cancel time with clients to do the trainings. Also uh, traveling, um, having to go someplace to do the, it just, it seemed very out of reach for a while. But what the pandemic did was get the training totally online and that was terrific. And so I thought, oh, I'm gonna do this. But again, I didn't wanna cancel with clients because all my clients were struggling so much in the pandemic that canceling with them felt like that was just going to, that was going to create more challenges for me um, to, to then have to catch up and make sure they were cared for in the time we would be missing. And then the space program ended up offering it to Australia and if I took it then, I could do it from six at night till 10 at night. And I didn't have to cancel with any clients. It made for some long days, but um, you know, it's something I'm really interested in learning. Some continuing education is super fun. So I signed up for it. It made it accessible for me. I was able to do it. Uh, I enjoyed the training a lot. And I realized, oh, I should build a membership around this. Many of the people on in You Are Not Your Mother who are parenting children are also dealing with anxiety and their kids are dealing with anxiety. And I think part of this has to do with if you are dismantling family patterns of dysfunction, 
one of the things that happens when you grow up in a dysfunctional family is you yourself are dealing with anxiety. Ask me how I know, spoiler alert, because I do have some anxiety. My anxiety tends to show up as social anxiety, um, which you may feel, you may say, I'm very surprised to hear that, Dawn. You seem like such an outgoing, friendly person. Oh, no, no, no. I uh, am a very socially anxious person. I am often, I like I like to do public speaking, um, but I sweat like, uh, boy, do I sweat while I'm doing public speaking. I get very, very, very nervous. Um, it, in part because I have all the social anxiety uh, and I could trace this back to some very specific things in my childhood and then exacerbated by being an introvert and having this high sensitivity temperament, et cetera, et cetera, so on, so on. I've learned to cope with my social anxiety. It doesn't, anxiety doesn't really go away. It's something that you learn to live with. And the SPACE program is all about how parents can help their children learn to live with anxiety. Um, the, the nice thing is with things like say social anxiety is it is no longer, I no longer experience it in the same way. So I may get sweaty and, and shaky and my voice might get shaky, but I no longer experience this as this awful thing my distress tolerance is really good and so even though in some ways i'm having the same experience i'm also not having the same experience because i've learned to manage it and i've learned to cope with it and i've learned to define it differently and this is what the space program does it it helps parents figure out how to give their children these tools and also gives the parents those tools so their anxiety about their child's anxiety they are also able to cope with and manage and experience differently. I love this space program. And so I switched You Are Not Your Mother to Child Anxiety Support. Um, it's in a new, much, much more comprehensive and cohesive software because before I was cobbling together the software that led to part of my overwhelm and uh, burnout. And now I have software. It doesn't do all the bells and whistles I want, but I realize I could give up bells and whistles for things to actually just work. So I focused this summer on switching from You Are Not Your Mother to Child Anxiety Support to building out those supports. And in that, I let go of my podcast. I thought I'd let go of my podcast permanently, but realized I miss it. I like this podcast. I, I don't like the, the feeling I'm letting you down when I don't get to things the way I want to, or when I do an interview and realize that the tech was uh, not working really well on their end or my end, and now I've got to do some complicated things to try to fix it. I don't really like that either. But, you know, I, I feel like we can roll with it. There's a lot of wisdom in some of these Zoom calls that don't sound so great, and maybe we can all just tolerate it. So I'm going to keep the You Are Not Your Mother podcast. Um, we no longer have a You Are Not Your Mother site, but we still, uh, there is a You Are Not Your Mother group inside the Child Anxiety Support site. And you're welcome to check out Child Anxiety Support at childanxietysupport.com. Um, or, or not, you could just hang out at this podcast, whatever you want. But I appreciate you listening to this and hanging in there with me. And I'd like to tell you that I will definitely have the next episode up by this date, but I am not sure yet. My goal is to have it up by December. I'm gonna commit to that. I look forward to talking to you guys again. I look forward to uh, learning from more of the wonderful guests that we have. I look forward to reaching out to more really awesome, cool guests too. So stay tuned, this place, same bat time, same bat channel, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.